<laughs> okay. Um, when reading, we're often listening to the voice of the writer. How do you describe Austin's voice? I think Austin's voice is, for me, the shortest distance between two points. Uh, her use of language is extraordinary. I think it's, I think it's actually unparalleled. And I don't think we read her right yet, read her correctly. Um, she's very precise in her language. And I think for a, someone who's been in the sciences and, and, and mathematics, that precision of language uh, there's, there's an extraordinary beauty about that. I think, again, the thing that I most value about Austin comes really on, on two levels, or the left brain and the right brain, uh, which is an extraordinary thing, I think, for, for any writer to reach kind of both, both parts of, of those different worlds. But, you know, again, from the left brain part, her, her parsimony and the use of language and um, if you take a word out anywhere, the, the meaning is, is utterly changed. And I think that that precision in writing is something that's extraordinarily beautiful to me. And on the, the right brain side of things, again, that, that comfort um, and that confidence and that security and the ease with which she can laugh at herself in society, you know, coming from kind of the Vietnam War years in, in the US, that's, that's just a very different world. And being able to look on that, on that very sunny kind of best of all places and best of all, best of all people and best of all times is is a very transporting kind of uh, place to be. When I think the more modern world, where nothing is is really quite right, will, as she would say, obtrude. My favorite adaptation of all the Austen novels is in fact Clueless, uh, which is Amy Heckerling's take on Emma, which I think is absolutely brilliant. Is it true that you've read Persuasion 70 times? No, actually that was true probably 10 years ago. I'm sure that I'm well into three digits by now in terms of my reading of Persuasion. You know, I think we can learn unfortunately very little from her manuscripts. Um, you know, as, as there, are, there, are, there are mostly fair copy. Um, there are some that, that, that show her work in progress, um, such as the Grandison manuscript, and it's of infinite consolation to someone like myself that the words didn't come out there like apparently Mozart's music perfect in its, you know, in its pure form right from the pen, but there was much labor to very little result uh, in her two, two inches of ivory. And I think that if it were any other way, it would be very nearly impossible for people to, to look at that and, and find any humanity in it. But to look in the, the draft copy such that exists and get to see that thought process and get to see that, you know, she wrote, she wrote some not perfect stuff to, to begin with is, is perhaps a reason for those of us to keep trying. It shows that, that she was human after all, and, and it shows her craft. It didn't descend from outer space and kind of go away when she died at, at 41, but that there was a true craft and there was an appreciation of what she was doing and that process. And it was very hard and it was very laborious by, by her own her own manuscript hand in saying so. For those of us who, who look at that, it's, it's, a, it's a very gratifying humanity um, in, a, in, an, in an otherwise almost sort of religious, religious view of this work as an end product. At least it makes it, it, makes it more human. And I think in, in that sense, much more beautiful. Thank you very much. I think that's uh, that's all we need.